Welcome back guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, so, midterm rentals, short term rentals, uh, investing in those from out of state. Let's get into it. Um, so I'm out here in Corpus Christi, uh, just done, got done for the day. We purchased a property out here, I'm out in the California area, Central Valley area. Uh, we purchased a property here, got a great deal out in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, needed a full renovation, we were pretty much done with the renovation. Uh, we want to go ahead and use it for a midterm rental. Um, so, you know, we decided to uh, spend two weeks, or me uh, alone, decided to come out for two weeks and set the uh, midterm rental up as uh, the renovations have been pretty much been done. Um, first time in coming out and setting up a property on my own, uh, we have about three under our belt. Um, I usually have my uh, wife and kids with me to come and help set up a rental. Our company is basically run from me and my wife. Um, boy, oh boy, did I get myself into a can of worms. Um, everything's going fine, no, no, uh, nothing, nothing big that we couldn't handle, but guys, I have a three bedroom house uh, completely that needs to be completely uh, furnished. Uh, when you're working on your own from out of state coming in to do this, man, there are some serious challenges that you need to get over. Um, and I'm learning, and um, I learned a lot of lessons in this trip. Um, number one, uh, basically we had to order, or what I decided to do is order all of our furniture from Amazon. Um, and had it there waiting for me when I showed up in town. I think that was a big um, uh, that was a big positive that that worked out. It seemed to have everything there, um, and uh, we I could get to work right away. The challenge is is that number one we had just a couple challenges, and these are just my experience, guys. Um, I'm sure there's guys who've been doing this a lot longer than I have, but just from my uh, personal experience. This is what I'm going through. And this is what I'm learning and um, some of the challenges that are coming to us and some of the solutions that I think uh, moving forward uh, I'm going to implement. So number one was the contractors weren't completely done with the renovation. Um, so when you're trying to get in and, and get, you have a million boxes, right? We have a million boxes from Amazon to furnish this place. Um, Working around them can be a challenge, right? They're either in your way or you're in their way. And so I noticed that a lot of the time that I had allotted to be in there trying to tear boxes up and put things together um, wasn't really working out because some of the contractors were still there. They were doing a couple small things uh, that just had to be done left, uh, putting in a backsplash in the kitchen, um, putting in the drains in the bathroom, just a couple odds and ends uh, things that you know, to wrap up the uh, renovation. Um, but just kind of moving around was a challenge. And I ended up just leaving um, and having to step out for a few hours while those guys can get in there and do their thing. And then I can come back later in the day to take care of the rest of the furnishings and everything that has to be done. Um, so that was a challenge. I think next time, uh, going forward, I think the best thing to do is let these guys completely finish uh, the entire renovation. And when they tell you they're 100% complete, then book your trip to get out here and do what you have to do. Um, it seems like I've probably wasted maybe a day or two in full, maybe, you know, about, I don't know, 12 hours worth where I couldn't really get in. It was okay because... There were some odds and ends that I had to go to like Lowell's and Home Depot um, to finish picking up some supplies um, and getting some of that stuff set up. And we do have another uh, fix and flip project out here. So I was able to run around over there and take care of some things there. So it wasn't really time lost, but uh, the time that I did want to be in there, you know, I couldn't because these contractors were there. And it's not, it's not on their fault, it's on me. I decided to book my trip um, with not having it completely done and I know that next time I'm just gonna make sure that these guys are done so that I don't get in their way and you know they're not in my way either so that's one thing I think um, having the contractors be completely done so you can get in there and do your thing 
um, is the best way to go about it. The other big thing is, man, working on your own, trying to furnish a three bedroom house is a chore and a task, um, especially when you're doing it out of state and you have a limited amount of time to get everything done, right? You got to get all of the, you know, especially if you're ordering from Amazon, getting all of the furniture completely assembled, making sure that all of the supplies are in the house, making sure that everything's set up the way you run your business for your short-term and midterm rental. It's challenging. It's a task. I have um, just about a little less than two weeks to get everything done. And I'm realizing that, um, man, it is, it is a challenge to get done. I'm, you know, I'm working, you know, Roughly around 14 hour days, I'm trying to, you know, assemble all the furniture, get all the cardboard boxes out, trying to arrange the furniture the way we want it, making sure all the supplies are there. Um, that was a chore. I, I'm thinking, you know, that I could get it done. And I knew that it was going to be a grind uh, because we have some experience setting up some Airbnbs and, and midterm rentals. Uh, but I've always had my business partner and my wife with me and even my kids have come with me to help us set up our properties uh, and I realized I knew that it was going to be a challenge just for me to come up here because my wife couldn't make it and you know we have still have younger kids in school just couldn't couldn't happen where we could all be out here real quick guys if you like the content you like what you're seeing you get something out of it please leave a comment below and let us know or if it completely sucks and you didn't like it please let us know as well too all right thanks back to the show um, so Number that brings me to my second um, challenge is that how do I get this done in a reasonable amount of time when I'm on my own working solo? And I think that going forward, I think that the best thing to do is to hire you know people from like TaskRabbit. Um, I know there's some other companies where you can hire labor people to come in and assemble the furniture. I think that I'm going to do that next time for sure. Um, and I think also the um, maybe what I could do next time is I'm going to go ahead and order all the furniture like I did from Amazon, have it all delivered to the property, <clears throat> draw up the diagram, which I usually do anyway. I usually have a diagram of how we're designing and doing the interior decorating because, you know, we want to be as uh, marketable as we can on Airbnb and for midterm rentals. So we, t we take a lot of effort, time and effort to make up diagrams and make sure the interior design is good. We all do it by our, on our own, uh, basically watching Pinterest. So <laughs> thank you, Pinterest, um, saving me some money on interior design work. Um, so I think what we're gonna do next time is contract a couple people to get in there and assemble all of the furniture for me, right? Um, and then what we could do is pull out the diagram, show them the diagram, go, hey, you know, try to get the furniture here in, in these locations the best you can um, and let those people do what they can um, and get most of that work done uh, by hiring some, some, like I said, some people who can, you know, who are interested in doing that, that type of uh, day labor. Um, I think that would be a huge help um, for me, especially like, especially if you're running your business, like, like myself, it's me and my wife, it, you know, we're real estate investors, um, and we're going out and doing a lot of this on our own. I think the best way to do it is, um, figuring out instead of having, when you have these issues for me, it's hard for me. Um, I always have the problem of when I come across a problem, uh, I have a, I have a thing of how do I fix it? right how do how can i what can i do to overcome those hurdles and i think the answer is not how i should do it but or what i can do but who can solve those problems for me instead of what i can do right uh who not how right how, not how can i do it but who can do it for me who can help me solve these problems I think uh, overall, probably uh, doing anything in your business that's is a huge help. And um, another shout out to uh, that book I just finished reading. It's called Who Not How. Guys, if you're a business owner, you're a real estate investor, read that book. That is a that is a huge help. Really going to open your eyes um, to help you run your business. 
So in reading that, I'm glad I did because I think that going forward, I think that that's what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, instead of breaking my back, um, working, you know, 14 hour days, trying to get everything set up right on my own, um, I'm going to have hire those people to help me out and then that will save and free me up for more time to do things like continuing to find more deals continuing to make phone calls and do what I want to do to you know search out more properties um, and also I think that you know guys I'm out here for two weeks um, that's a considerable cost right it's considerable travel cost it's something that you'll have to budget into your numbers I think when you're when you're investing out of state um, I think that um, when you're doing this from a distance, uh, you know, your travel costs can be substantial. Now, for us, it wasn't entirely too bad. I had a lot of points that we use and, and we do travel a little bit. So, you know, I was able to um, really kind of zero out a lot of those bills because we had so many travel rewards. So that was great. Uh, but things come up, guys, like, you know, like I said, I'm out here in Corpus Christi. When I got here, it was, you know, super humid maybe 86 degrees 86 to 90 degrees and um it was hot and of course the ac went went out so it is completely miserable in the house um my plan was to since it was you know mostly complete just to stay at the property but guys working 14 hour days and then being miserable at night no way um, so I had to get a hotel room and I'm staying in the hotel room till the AC gets fixed. For all of you real estate investors, you know that those things happen. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, so I think that, you know, for sure, um, investing from out of state at a distance, um, you definitely have to utilize who, not how, right? Not how can I do it, but who can solve these problems for me? And for me, guys, that's a huge problem because I've always been a DIYer, for sure. I'm always a DIY guy. I've always figured out ways to solve problems on my own. I'd rather take things apart and learn how to do it and take the extra few hours to do it uh, and, and figure out things on my own. But as I you know, progress down this journey of being a business owner, real estate investor, I'm realizing that if you really want to scale up and go to the next level, you really have to figure out that issue in who, not how. Who can solve your problems, not how can I solve my problems. And if you can figure that out, you really can scale up and level up to the next level um, because you should be saving your time. Like, you know, guys, and I, I'm going to tell you really quick, you know, I started doing fix and flips and my... My issue was I figured, hey, if I can do the renovation myself, I can save a lot of money. But I realized really quick that I was losing a lot of money because I was spending, breaking my back, spending hours working on one single renovation when I could be spending all of that time focusing on finding more deals. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, so anyway, guys, this is just a real quick update about where we're at. Uh, my, you know, my experiences, please comment and like, and subscribe. Uh, please tell me guys what you guys are doing to, um, manage these, these, uh, investment properties from out of state and let me know what you think I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. All right, guys. And all right, until the next one, we'll see you soon. Hey guys, before you leave, please like and subscribe and sign the notification bell so you can catch all our latest videos coming out. Thanks again. Bye.